Welcome to From Delco to Harrisburg with Representative O'Mara. I'm your host, Morgan Dougherty. Jen O'Mara represents the 165th District in Delaware County and is diligent about meeting with her constituents and addressing their concerns. Then she's off to Harrisburg where she works to enact the change that their community needs. Today, we will be discussing just some of what Jen is currently working on, including new developments for vaccine distribution in Delaware County, the upcoming primary election that will take place in May, and much more. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Jen. Thank you for having me. Yeah, how are you? I'm doing good. good. Uh, enjoying the start of spring. Yeah. How about you? Good, good. Um, so let's start with talking about uh, the COVID-19 vaccine distribution. Mm -hmm. So I know that we did just open up a mass vaccination distribution center in uh, Delaware County Community College, mm -hmm. but unfortunately they were expecting a large shipment of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Uh, so tell us what's going to happen with that uh, mass distribution center now. So thank you um, for bringing this up. First, I want to also mention that as of this week, uh, which by the time you're watching this, it'll uh, be for everyone, all Pennsylvanians are over the age of 16 are now eligible to receive their vaccine. So we sped up the timeline to make sure everyone was eligible, which is great news. Um, Delaware County did open last weekend first, uh, for the first time a mass vaccination site at Delaware County Community College. This is the sixth um, site that the county is bringing online, in addition to all the pharmacies um, that are getting their supply separate from the state. So at this site, they were planning on vaccinating folks driving through using the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, they use this site in particular for the J&J &J vaccine because it's one and done. There isn't as many uh, rules with observation and it would be quicker to get people in and not have to worry about scheduling second, appoint second follow-up appointments. Um, now with the federal government putting a pause on Johnson & Johnson, there will also be a pause on this site um, in Delaware County. Anyone who had already signed up for an appointment will be contacted by the county to then schedule an appointment for Moderna or Pfizer. Uh, but it's important to note that with the pause with the J&J &J vaccine, it does not impact our allotment of Pfizer and Moderna at all. So we will still be getting over 10,000 doses a week for first doses in Delaware County, and we'll be distributing them at the remaining sites, which are um, in Chester, at the Keystone Wellness Center, in Aston, in uh, the Community Center, in Yaden, at the new, what will be the Delaware County Health Department, and then here at Penn Medicine at Radnor, and at Springfield Hospital. So we will still be running those five sites and we'll get DCCC back online as soon as we're given the green light from the federal government. Okay, and are those sites that you mentioned, are they considered mass vaccination sites? Some of them are larger than others. At Springfield, they can do about 240 people a day, but at um, in Aston, they can get up to 1,000 people vaccinated in a day. So we're getting there with having larger sites. Um, Delaware County Community College was going to be the largest in terms of throughput. We would have been able to do anywhere from five to 10,000 residents a weekend. Um, so as soon as we're able to get that back online, I know we'll be working really hard to do so. Mm -hmm. Understood. And as you mentioned, um, every American is now eligible to receive the vaccine and that could make securing an appointment a little more difficult since mm -hmm. everybody's trying to get one. Um, are you able to be a resource to people that are having trouble booking an appointment? We're able to direct folks to the right place. Um, we have contacts with local pharmacies, so at any given time I can share information with who currently has doses and direct the constituents to those pharmacies to schedule. For the county now, they've sort of changed their process. So now you can go onto Delaware County's website, which is delcopa.gov, um, and you can, they, they have basically pick, pick the kind of vaccine you want, and then they'll show you what appointments are available. They open up appointments throughout the week. So if you get on today and there's nothing, check tomorrow because they add thousands of appointments as soon as they open. Um, so now it's, it's a little bit more, um, Easier, there's not a wait list per se, but we are still able to connect with folks to those resources to make sure they can get registered. Is there any difference when, when you're booking an appointment, whether you're booking it at um, a Rite Aid or a Walgreens as opposed to one of these uh, distribution centers like Penn, Penn Medicine? Well, the main difference is where their vaccines are coming from. So the federal, farm, the federal government is using a federal pharmacy program to send vaccines to the Walgreens, Rite Aid, CVS, things like that. 
the state is sending vaccines to the county, which we are then putting out through those five centers I mentioned, or the five sites I mentioned earlier. So it's in each, the, you know, Rite Aid, CVS, Walgreens, they all have their own way to sign up. They all have their own process and system. Um, but the main difference is where their vaccines are coming from. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, as more people get vaccinated, how do you see summer 2021 looking? Are we on our way to some sort of normal? I, I would think so. You know, I'm hopeful. Um, I know that my townships are now getting ready to plan their 4th of July parades, and we hope to see people out for those. I think people should get used to wearing masks. I don't think masks are going anywhere. Um, but as more people get vaccinated, it'll be easier to have gatherings with other people who are vaccinated. Um, to be indoors or outdoors in those gatherings. Uh, and it should be better for families as well. It'll be way easier to have family gatherings when you know everyone in your family has been vaccinated. So I'm really hopeful that uh, we see things start to get better for everyone. Um, I do, you know, we still don't know if this is gonna be a type of vaccine where you get a booster shot next year, and that may very much be what happens. So people should be flexible. Um, stick with masks uh, and hopefully we will be having a, a way better summer this summer than we did last year. Hmm. And how important are our COVID-19 vaccination cards going to be this summer? Do you think we're going to have to show them to get into a bar or a concert? I not. I haven't heard any discussions like that in Pennsylvania yet. I know okay. there's national discussion going on with vaccine passports and if we're going to have those or not. I haven't seen any um, proposals in Harrisburg to bring them, and I will pay atten close attention if that does happen. Uh, I know that with traveling, you know, they, they, they're telling you, hold on to your CDC vaccine card. If you've gotten vaccinated, it helps ensure when you get your second dose, it's all marked off. They'll also be helpful when we, if we ever have to move towards boosters to be able to show you did get the first one and second one. But all that information is put into a system, a state system that your healthcare provider, for example, could access to make sure that in your records it's updated. So I don't want people to, you know, worry if they lose it, it's the end of the world. It, it's not the end of the world. Um, but if you are in between appointments, make sure you keep that card for your second appointment. I think that's the most important thing right now is using it to prove your, your second appointment if you've gotten the first shot of Moderna or Pfizer. Okay. Also, as more people are getting vaccinated and things are starting to open up, we are seeing an uptick in gun violence. Yeah. So can you tell us what's going on in the legislation in Harrisburg to kind of make some changes, get a handle on, on these gun laws in Pennsylvania? Yeah, unfortunately, that is sort of the sad reality, right? We're seeing school shootings again. We're seeing shootings at grocery stores. And um, Pennsylvania is not... Uh, we're not innocent from this gun violence either, right? It's impacting right a city right nearby in Philadelphia. We also will always remember what happened um, in Squirrel Hill in Pittsburgh. So in Harrisburg, there has been a number of bills that have been introduced, some to deal with common sense reforms like mandating lost and stolen um, reporting for firearms or having universal background checks. Uh, we're also, there's legislation dealing with ghost guns and um, prohibiting the sale or purchase of the parts that someone could get to, to put together their own weapon. Um, one of the bills that I have been working on that I think would make a big difference in this conversation is extreme risk protection orders. So ERPOs, as they're more commonly known, basically would give loved ones a, a chance using the judicial system um, to take away someone's firearms if that person is in having a mental health crisis. Um, right now, the only option is to use an involuntary commitment, a 302, and if that happens, you lose your right to own a gun forever. Um, the ERPOs, on the other hand, you're, you know, your loved one has to report to local authorities Local authorities have to be the one that removes that removes the weapon, and then the person who's having their firearm taken away has a chance to go in front of a judge, and the judge makes the final decision, which is protecting due process, um, but also giving loved ones a chance to take to take a firearm away if someone's in jeopardy of hurting themselves or someone else. 
And while gun violence is a huge problem and I always want to shed light on that, I also think it's important that we talk about death by suicide using a firearm. It's actually the most common way that someone dies from firearm is suicide. And that's what ergos would be used to, um, to, to really help prevent. Um, I am the co-sponsor of this bill. I'm the Democratic co-sponsor, the Republican co-sponsor's uh, rep named Todd Stevens. And we dropped the co-sponsorship memo a couple weeks ago. Unfortunately, in Harrisburg, I don't know how much momentum we will get in moving the, these bills. Uh, the majority party in Harrisburg is still very much in line with the NRA and they don't believe that we do need to make some of these reforms despite a majority of Americans and Pennsylvanians supporting some of these common sense reforms. So I'm going to keep working on it. Uh, it's in my community. As, as I drove here, I saw shirts up at churches on Lancaster Avenue in Rodner um, raising awareness about gun violence and prevention that we could take. So. I think it's important that we keep working on it. And even if we do meet obstacles in Harrisburg, we're going to continue trying to raise awareness and get these bills passed. Hmm. Yeah, MLTV was actually at their Gun Violence Awareness Day for the t-shirts you're referring to. Um, and at the end of that walk, they had paperwork uh, to send your local representatives on the state level and the federal level to uh, get these gun laws enacted. Mm -hmm. um, and one that they talked about in particular was a one handgun a month law that was introduced in Delaware County. Um, and they also talked a lot about people that um, get mostly women to go into these gun stores and purchase a large amount of handguns to, to, for somebody else that wouldn't be able to pass a background check and to resell. Do you know anything about those kind of laws? I, I've seen co-sponsorship memos around them, um, but I know that while they're important, the, where we have been sort of focusing is on universal, universal background checks, lost and stolen reporting in ERPOs um, with Ceasefire Pennsylvania because we think they have a better chance of passing than one of the, like the one you mentioned. Yeah. Um, in addition to one handgun per month, there's also waiting period bills that have been introduced. So implementing a waiting period of anywhere from 24 to 72 hours from the time you show interest and then actually go back to the store to pick it up. Mm -hmm. And people are pushing that because there's a lot of stories where the person who died by suicide bought the gun 20 minutes before they died or an hour before they died. Um, basically went to the store, got it, and then commit, you know, yeah. died. Um, so I think that that's what's driving those conversations. But if we're trying to be strategic rather than pushing all these different bills, I think it's important that we pick the ones where we can get the most um, support from both sides of the aisle and try to push those forward. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I know that these types of issues are important to consider when we are voting for our, our officials. And mm -hmm. I know there's election coming up. Um, so can you can you tell us about this upcoming election and what's important to know about it? Yeah, so the May uh, 2021 primary is quickly approaching. Um, I always say these are odd year elections, not off year, because there are still important elections even the year after a presidential. So May 18th, 2021 is the primary day in Pennsylvania. We will be voting on local races, so your local township or, uh, you know, boards of supervisors or commissioners. Uh, we will also be electing magisterial judges, um, district, like county judges, state judges. Um, I believe there is state superior court, state supreme court, all different levels. Um, and in Delaware County, we also have register of wills and sheriff um, and uh, the um, comptroller up for re-election as well. So uh, it's a primary, which means you're, sp you're going in there to vote for your candidates if you're a Democrat or if you're a Republican. Um, so independent voters usually can't participate in the primary, but this primary is a little different. Um, in addition to the candidates that you will be voting on in May, you will also be voting on four different ballot questions. Um, and these ballot questions will be on the ballot for every Pennsylvanian, Democratic or Republican primary. But independent voters can also vote in this election on those primary on those ballot questions. So even though it's a closed primary state, ballot questions need to be voted on by every voter. 
So if you're registered independent and you don't think you can participate this primary, you can. Um, you can request a mail-in ballot or you can go vote on election day. Just let them know you're an independent and you're there to vote on the ballot questions. Okay, so they can't participate in voting for the candidates, but they can answer the ballot questions, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah. And what will these ballot questions look like? So there are four. Um, one of them has to do with authorizing local um, volunteer fire and, and EMS companies to utilize a state loan program with funds that are already available. It just sort of changes the way um, that who can apply for them. So um, that's one. There's also a ballot question on the ballot to change the Pennsylvania Constitution to protect people from discrimination based on their race or ethnicity. And then there are two ballot questions related to changing the Constitution when it comes to declaration of emergency powers. One is limiting the amount of time that a governor can use a declaration of emergency from 90 days to 21 days, regardless of what the emergency is. And it can only be extended with approval of the General Assembly. And the second question has to do with how a de declaration of emergency can be ended. Currently, you would need a concurrent resolution to pass in the General Assembly that has two thirds support. This changes it so it's a super, uh, it's a simple majority. So that would mean 102 members could vote to end something instead of the two thirds threshold, which is a little higher in the 160s. I'm not exactly sure of the number. Um, so there are four questions. There is great resources on Pennsylvania Department of State website, which sort of tells you the question, tells you what it is in plain English, and gives you the reason how this question ended up on the ballot. And then the League of Women Voters is also putting out a lot of good information about the position, you know, voting yes means this, voting no means this. So I definitely suggest people reach out. And then two dates to keep in mind for the primary. Um, the last day to register to vote for the primary is May 3rd of 2021. And the last day to request a ballot, um, if you want to vote by mail now in Pennsylvania, everyone can vote by mail, is May 11th, 2021. And you can do all of this at the Vote Spa, I like to call it, votespa.com or votespa.com. And you can make all the changes you need. You can register online, request a mail-in ballot. Everything is right there. Okay, great. And why, why would you say it's important for members of Delaware County and Pennsylvania to participate in this election? Why is it vital that they do so? Well, it's important that we vote in every election. This is um, what members of our military are fighting to uphold, right, is our freedom, and that starts with your right to vote. And voting in these elections are important because you're gonna be choosing, oh, school board director, that's another person I forgot to mention. So say, for example, you know, you're voting on your school board directors. Your school board is making decisions about property taxes, is making decisions about how they spend money at the school. So that has direct impact over your life, both if you have children, even, even if you don't. Um, county judges are super important because if you ever have to litigate in your county court system, it's those judges that are going to be making the final decisions. Um, county council is up for election this uh, this time around. County council is the governing body of the county we live in. So while you know the work I do is important, and so are all your state and federal officials, your Municipal and county officials are the ones really impacting your day-to-day -day life the most. And so I think it's critical for people to know who they're voting for um, and to get out and participate. And we need to see more voter participation in Pennsylvania. So especially if you just turned 18, make sure you get registered and participate in this upcoming election. Hmm, absolutely. And you have your hand in so many bots. You're so busy. <laughs> You're passionate about so many things. Is there any uh, bill legislation that you're working on currently that you would like to talk about? Well, one thing that has come up lately, I'm refocusing on student debt. And I've been hearing from families right now as they're making their financial decisions and their college decisions for next semester, um, how unaffordable it has gotten in Pennsylvania. The average amount of debt that a Pennsylvania student graduates with is now increased to $37,000 a year or $37,000 average. Um, and that's if you're attending state or private schools, it's expensive. So I have a bill with a Republican member, Megan Schroeder, that we've introduced the Student Borrower Bill of Rights. And this would provide more oversight over the student loan lending industry in Pennsylvania. 
and would also create an office of the ombudsman, which would be a consumer advocate specifically for student borrowers. Because right now, if you need help with your student loan, you're calling your lender. Um, it isn't in their best business interest to give you the best advice that would help you save the most money. Um, so a consumer advocate, like an ombudsman specifically for students, would be able to provide students and families with advice that they know they can trust um, and that will have their best interests at heart. So this has been passed in other states. We're not the first one trying to do this, uh, but I think it would make a difference. And Pennsylvania is usually 48th, 49th, or 50th in terms of debt per student per capita. Hmm. And so I think if we're contributing so much to this problem, we should be doing more um, to try and fix it. So my colleague and I, Megan Schroeder, we've also started a student debt caucus and we're planning our first meeting for the session in May to convene colleagues on both sides of the aisle to you know, go over some of these problems and see how we can try and address them legislatively. Yeah, that's amazing because that is a really big issue around the country, but in Pennsylvania yeah. as well. Um, and it, it is a confusing process when it you is. are applying for student loans. It I is. know I, I went through it and most people have. Um, do you have any resources or anywhere that people can go to help them through that process? Uh, well, people can contact, if they're applying for, you know, whatever school you're applying for, reach out to those schools' financial aid offices. Um, the people who work in those offices are always very helpful and provide great information. Um, College Board, for what it's worth, has a lot more information now online, and um, FIA is a local, it's a state lending agency, but they have a lot of tools like um, there, the, you can go on there and simulate, if, you know, if I'm going to study this, I'm going to, how much money will I make each year and how much, you know, student loan payment can I afford? Mm -hmm. Or you can compare colleges and their prices and what an average student leaves with in terms of debt. So I would check out FIA, um, P-H-E-A-A, -A. Um, just Google it and there's tons of helpful resources and utilize College Board and utilize the schools that you're applying to and see how you can get support there as well. Yeah. Definitely. Are you anticipating any kind of pushback when you initiate this bill? Well, last session we introduced it. We didn't get it to run, um, but we had over 50 co-sponsors and it was almost 50-50 in makeup of Democratic and Republican co-sponsors. And I like to joke, we had one of the most conservative members and one of the most um, liberal members signing on. So clearly we found a good idea. Um, we weren't able to get it over the finish line and I don't know how much COVID-19 had to do with that because it sort of sidetracked everything that we were working on. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I know that Megan and I are very strategic in talking about student debt because we want to make sure both sides of the aisle buy in. You know, we don't want to take the conversation too far right or too far left and then lose any momentum that we have gained. So we're, we're really strategic in focusing on the way it, that we are. Um, and hopefully we will get more buy-in this session. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned before, you are diligent about meeting with your constituents and their needs. Um, can, you, can you tell them how they can reach out to you and how they can tell you their concerns? Yes, definitely. Um, folks can call my office at 610-544-9878 or email me at repomara at pahouse.net. Um, re just request a meeting and we will get something scheduled. Um, this week I had some phone meetings scheduled, a couple online, and next week I will be meeting a constituent at a rain garden in Springfield so I can see you know, what we're talking about. It's safe, we're meeting outside, we can socially distance, um, but we're starting to figure out ways that I can do some in-person things as well in, in a safe way for both myself and the constituent. And what are some topics that you are able to assist the constituents with uh, that they wouldn't maybe think of that you can offer assistance for? Well, as we're getting ready for Real ID, that's the one thing I always like to plug. Um, everyone, if they want to fly domestically, will need a passport or a Real ID as of October 1, 2021. And in order to, do, to get your Real ID, you need to have birth certificate, the right copy, social security cards. If you changed your name, you need to prove it. There's a whole bunch of identifying information you need. If you're missing something, let us know. My office can help you get the document that you're missing. 
um, and we can go over everything with you before you go to a PennDOT center to get your real ID to make sure you don't waste a trip and that we have everything taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, we're also helping a lot of folks right now with notary services. It's a free service that we provide. So if you need something notarized, give us a call and we'll make sure we take care of that. Awesome. Thank you so much for your great information. I know you you are so busy and you're so <laughs> dedicated to helping everybody in Delaware County and I really admire it myself. So thank you for being here today. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, so if you have any questions or concerns that you think Representative O'Mara may be able to assist you with at home, please visit her website at repomara.com where you will find her contact information. Until next time, thank you for watching.